Hello people, I'm Bharat Acharya. Let's continue with our second lecture. So here, I'm going to tell you about the processor and the memory of 8051. So what do you know? 8051 is a microcontroller. It has internal processor, memory and I.O. Our first focus is on the processor. So 8051 has an 8-bit processor. That's how we say it. What does that mean? It means it can do 8-bit operations in one cycle. Simply what it means is, when you say add, there is an instruction add. Whenever you learn the instruction set, you know it, right? You are adding two 8-bit numbers at a time in one operation. So here, get, get this clear what is an 8-bit number and what is a 16-bit number. An 8-bit number has the range 00 to FF. Please get a few things crystal clear. We write every number in hexadecimal. When I say we, I'm not only talking about myself or us teachers, including you, including programmers. When you do programming, you type, when you're typing a program, you'll be giving numbers. Every number you give is in hexadecimal form. Are you clear? Inside the computer, the number will become binary. Okay? So, 00, zero will be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. FF will be 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. You know every digit takes 4 bits. Correct? I'm sure you also know the shortcut to get the value of any number. 8421 is the breakup. So, suppose you want 7. 7 is 4 plus 2 plus 1. So, I don't need 8. So, I'm putting a 0. But I need 4, 2 and 1. So, this is 7. I want 3. 3 is 2 plus 1. So, it is 0, 0, 1, 1. I want 6. 6 is 4 plus 2. So, that is 0, 1, 1, 0. I, I, I hope you knew this. But even if you didn't, I hope now you understood how to get any number instantly in binary. Right? So, F is 15. 15 means 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1. So, 1, 1, 1, 1. Again, 1, 1, 1, 1. So, that is 0, 0 to FF. That's your range. This is the range of an 8-bit number. A 16-bit number, on the other hand, now you tell me, you tell me, a 16-bit number will go from 0, 0, 0, 0, 4 digits, up to F, 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 F. In binary form, it will be 16 zeros up to 16 ones. Are you clear? Come on, let's do a small, quick exercise. Uh, tell me, what is uh, 34? It's a how many bit number? 8-bit number, correct? 1, 2, 3, 4, 16-bit number, 6, 1, 7, 0. 16 bit number, 3, 9, 8 bit number, right? Uh, 4, 1, 7, 6, 16 bit number. Are we clear? Tell me 4, 1, 7, 6 in binary. You have to be very fast at this because you'll need it all throughout the subject. What's the point of having a problem every time? Rather, put an effort and get clear this clear immediately right in the beginning. So, 4, 1, 7, 6 is 4. This is 4. 1. This is 1. 7, 6. This is 4176 in binary. Last one, 6170. Oh, it has the same digits, pretty much the same digits. Uh, 2F79 uh, as an example. 2F79. 2 is 0010, 0, 0, 1, 0. F is 1111, 7 is 0111, 1, 1, 1. 9 is 1001. 0, 0, 1. Okay, are we clear? So, these are 16 bit numbers. And these are 8-bit numbers. Is the concept of 8-bit and 16-bit number clear? So when I say the processor is an 8-bit processor, it means it can operate on 8 bits at a time. So I want to do 24 plus 35, all hexadecimal, right? Answer is 5 plus 4, 9, 2 plus 3, 5, 59. It can do this in one cycle. Are you clear? Whereas if I want to do 1, 2, 3, 4 plus 3, 1, 5, Two, as an example of just taking some numbers, here it will require two cycles. These are 16-bit numbers. The processor is an 8-bit processor. It will break it down into two cycles. First, it will add this. Of course, it doesn't directly do 16-bit addition. We will be doing it in, in a program. But the idea is the same, that we will do, be doing it in two steps. First, we will add the lower bytes. 4 plus 2 is 6. 5 plus 3 is 8. Then we will add the higher bytes. 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 plus 1 is 4. Of course, when we add the higher bytes, we are going to take the carry that goes from lower byte to higher byte. Of course, I am going to teach you all that when we do programming. This is right now an introduction. So, I wanted this to be clear to you. What is the meaning of 8-bit processor? Add, subtract, multiply, divide, and or XOR. 
these are the arithmetic logic operations that we do. They are more also rotate and all, which you'll see when you see the whole instruction set. They are all eight bit operations. Are we clear? Right? Higher processors are 16 bit processors, 32 bit processors. Modern era is a 64 bit era. It can do 60. So, modern processors are 64 bit processors. They do 64 bit operations in one cycle. Can AD51 do 64 bit operations? Yes. Please don't say no. Okay. You are an engineer. You're going to engineer the idea. It can do 64 bit operations, but it will take eight such small operations, eight such parts of operations to add to 64 bit numbers. But of course, it can add 64 bit numbers. It will just take much more time. So, modern processors are much faster because they have bigger processing units. AD51 didn't need that for the generation that it was in. Eight bits was enough. And Whenever you do intense programming with AD51, you'll understand it delivers on point. Whatever task is fit for AD51, it delivers on point. Anyway, so it has an 8-bit processor. It has internal memory. What form of memory? ROM as well as RAM. ROM is used. ROM is of size 4 KB. RAM is of size 128 bytes. Okay. Sorry for the bad handwriting. 4 kilobytes, 128 bytes. Understand what ROM and RAM are used for. Microcontrollers are not used in computers. There's a big difference between using a computer and using an appliance. In your computer, you change its programs on a day-to-day -day basis. You do coding. I'm sure you have done or you do intend to do in the future. So you can write your own programs, run them, do them as many times as you want. So your memory in which you write your programs should be writable memory. Whereas, whereas microcontrollers are used in appliances. Now this is an appliance. Tell me, does it have a program? Of course, that's what runs this remote. Are you ever going to change this program? Do you change this program on a day to day basis? Do you intend to open this remote and rewrite its code? No. These are permanent programs. Okay. So my program should not be, need not be stored in a memory where I need to write on a daily basis. Further, something very important. This remote has this as your power supply, the batteries, right? I have removed the batteries right in front of you. So power supply is gone. Should the programs be lost? No. If I put the batteries back and I shut this, should I say some prayer before it? I use it hoping that it'll work. No, it should work, right? And it does work. I'm not sure whether you can read what is there. If you trust me and you trust the cameraman, there is evidence. It still is working pretty much how it's supposed to work. That means the programs are not lost. That means the programs are stored in ROM. I told you, stop behaving like a layman, start looking at the world like an engineer. These things should come to you naturally the next time for the next device that you evaluate. The programs need not be changed, but the programs need to be there even if power supply is lost. Same applies to your fridge or your TV or your washing machine. You switch off your washing machine, you switch off, you shut down the power supply of your whole house, you go for a long vacation, you come back, you turn on the appliances, they should still work. The program should not be lost. You don't want to change the programs on a day to day basis. You will never change the program of your fridge or your washing machine, but it should work even after losing power supply and getting it back. The program should remain where they are. That means programs must be stored in permanent memory, which means programs must be stored in ROM. So henceforth in microcontrollers, you are learning AD51, your focus is on microcontrollers. Whenever we say program memory, we are talking about ROM. Are we clear? The other word for ROM in microcontrollers is program memory. Are we clear? Right? This is not true for computers. In the computers, you in the computer you change your program on a day-to-day basis, but in a microcontroller you don't. So programs are stored always in ROM. Are we clear? So what is stored in RAM? Data. Data in a microcontroller is changeable. Today I want the AC temperature to be 24. 
that doesn't mean tomorrow I want it to be 24. Tomorrow I can make it 23, I can make it 20, I can make it 18. When I'm cooking food today, I need so-and-so temperature for cooking. I don't care what temperature I cooked in yesterday. Today I'm cooking at so-and-so temperature. That means this data is going to change every time you cook. And when you switch off and you switch it on, you don't want that data again. You are going to enter your own data. So your data doesn't need to remain even after power supply is lost, which means data will be stored in volatile memory, which means data will be stored in RAM. Are we clear? So programs are stored in ROM, data is stored in RAM, henceforth when I say the word I or wherever you learn all of 8051 from, whenever your teacher says data memory, the teacher is talking about RAM and when your teacher says program memory, he or she who is your teacher is talking about ROM. Are we clear? Now look at their sizes. ROM is of 4 KB, RAM is of 128 bytes. Now when you look at these numbers for the first time, you feel what nonsense. What is this? Why would you work with such a small processor? 4 KB of ROM is just two. Today we talk about megabytes, not even megabytes, even megabytes are outdated. We talk about gigabytes and terabytes, correct? That's the modern world. I told you 45 years have elapsed since this was made. It's not that this kind of memory is outdated. If you understand where a microcontroller like 8051 is used, these memories are far more than sufficient. Keep one thing in mind when you're learning 8051. It has stood the test of time. Since 44 years, since it was made, it's been taught and is still being taught in universities all around the world. I have students, I have my website, I have full courses of these processors. I've been physically teaching since 20 years, virtually online I've been teaching since the past four years. I have students from all over the world and they all learn 8051. So what you're learning is tremendously successful and is an ideal standpoint. So never question what you're learning. Okay, I'm not trying to preach here, but I'm just saying some students try to build a wall between themselves and the subject just to get an opportunity to get away from it. So that shouldn't happen these memories are way more than sufficient when you understand where to use them. Say for example, 4KB ROM. 4KB ROM means you have 4000 bytes. Actually, 4, 000, 4 multiplied by 1024, 4096 bytes, but I'm keeping it simple, 4000 bytes. In ROM you store programs, that means instructions. Instructions can be 1 byte, 2 byte or 3 byte, let's take an average 2 byte. Okay. So that means there are 2,000 instructions that you can store on an average, around 2,000 instructions. Now you tell me, do you need 2,000 instructions to run this remote? No way. What is the program? Like I said, it doesn't have to run Windows or doesn't have to have any fancy OS. Its first program is to identify the key that is pressed. That's a one and a half page program, right? Its next program is to display something on the LCD. That's again one one and a half page program. The last program is to do serial communication. That's a two page program. What is that? All together about 300 lines of code. What did I say? You have the capacity of putting 2000 instructions, whereas 300 to 500 instructions are enough to run the program of this device and much, much lesser to run the program of this device just to identify one of these two keys. Next is to send either lock or unlock. The program for it is the same. You just send a different number for lock and different number for unlock. And the next is to encrypt the number and send it. All of it will not require more than 200 lines of code and you have the scope of 2000 thousand instructions is suddenly this memory seeming to be quite sufficient next look at ram what is the size of ram 128 bytes what does that mean you can store 128 such numbers this is one byte eight bits is one byte so you can store 128 such numbers what data do you want to store in this do you want to store songs do you want to store movies do you want to store my face no what do you want to store <laughs> you want to store the temperature that is a one byte number a temper temperature is in this range. Of course, it won't even go up to FF. It's an AC for crying out loud. The temperature won't cross 30, 35. So 0 to 35 and won't even go up to 0. So 16 to 35 or whatever, even if it has to go from 0 to 255, that can be stored in one single byte. One byte is what you need to store temperature. One byte is what you need to store the mode. One byte for the fan speed. Three bytes. Timer. Okay, you have an on time, two bytes for that. Off time, two bytes for that. 2 plus 2, 4 plus 3, 7. 7 bytes is all you need to store the data over here. That's all you need. Throw in another 30 bytes, 37. Throw in another 40 bytes, 47. Still, you have 128 bytes of storage space. I'm not trying to sell 8051 to you. <laughs> Don't get scared. All I'm trying to make you understand is these numbers are far more than sufficient when you understand where 8051 is used. And if you want to build some really challenging application and you feel 
you need more memory. You always have the freedom to connect external memory. You can connect external RAM also, external ROM also. Though in most cases you don't need it, but the scope of expansion is always there. Like a phone comes with internal memory, but most phones, not Apple, but most phones allow you to put those memory cards inside. So it has internal memory, but it allows you to expand it. Cameras, they come with internal memory, allow you to put, which you need to put because the internal memory is quite less. You put those memory chips inside. So there is always a scope of increasing memory if need be, but in most cases it's not required. So that was the idea of this lecture, to tell you what is the processor, make you understand what these memories do and well, what is the significance of their sizes. Hope you understood it. Next lecture, we'll be looking at the IO section.